groups are presented today really represented the bright, innovative solutions that we want to see in Africa. Nothing is impossible. Yeah, nothing is possible because you have customers in Mogadishu. They have like a 12-hour undeclared curfew. And during that period of time, that's where we rule, that's where we control all this business because people cannot go outside to buy airtime. They've got so many and are rapidly growing the big client base, which works very good for us because it shows people are trusting us more and more and people are willing to pay for the convenience and not hustle too much to get the ticket. IT is going to help places like Africa to leapfrog and sort of skip a whole generation of investment uh, that is kind of redundant in the developed world. IT is really going to help create opportunities at a much lower investment, and therefore higher uh, return on investment. Microsoft invested 20,000 US in this company. App Campus, 20,000 euros. Every platform has their own magic moment. And I think for the Windows platform, the magic moment is now. And that is what we're taking advantage of. This is the iTunes of Kenya. Is, is that what it is? It really is. We'd actually like to look at it as the South Node of Africa, where basically any local artist can come and push the music for absolutely free to their fans. Safaricom has a similar thing. What they have are physical downloads to their phones. They don't have anything close to the library that we're offering. What's the reaction been like so far? One of the things that 88 is trying to do is how do we bring more serious like business people into the startup scene to create startups. So how does a guy from New Zealand end up in this part of the world? Africa looks like Australia and Scandinavia looked in 1997. It's, it's a new frontier. It's bleep bleep exciting. How do you compete with the millions of other travel and tourism online companies out there? Our formula for competition so far has been just to focus on a few packages and provide the best service. It's not about having a lot of products, it's about having great products. The investors, they definitely knew more about the African market, the challenges that the startups faced, uh, more so than some of the other investors that I have met at other venues. For that, I think they, they definitely, in a very meaningful way, engaged the startups and, and also I think appreciated the level of uh, maturity that they displayed, the level of sophistication in the business plan, but also the opportunities that they forecasted. If it works in Nairobi, can it work in other towns? So basically, we do want to expand out to other towns, but we want to perfect our business in Nairobi so that we can move the same operation to another town and provide a great service. Because of the high risk, high reward nature, it sort of needs a divide and conquer approach. There has to be a team of people who can invest together and who can leverage their own business networks, who can leverage their own you know, access to markets to help the startups ramp up uh, sales. Yeah, which we then have to follow up on. It's not that You know, if we can synergize the two things, then the investment is a no-brainer. Who's the competition? When you look at Standard Media's whole website, which covers everything, and they've been there for close to 10 years, in two years, we're already doing two-thirds of their traffic just on entertainment alone. And I think we've shown with a lot of the investors who came here today that they're like business people that are looking for real business deals. They're not just here to help the ecosystem. They believe that they can make money on going into these startups. And I think that's, that's, that's really important.